Hey, yo, hello. There's a question that a lot of people keep asking me. Hey, Gil, why do no one click on my videos? Is my content not good enough? It's my camera quality, isn't it? It's my mic. I don't have the SM7B. I need to throw more money at my production value. And my question to them is always, how would they know that your video is bad if they haven't clicked on it? The big thing with YouTube is that you have to grab the attention before you grab the attention, meaning that your thumbnail and title is basically going to be the thing that decides if the person even tries to watch your video or not. And most of the time, the big thing that sets YouTubers back is their crappy thumbnail, <laughs> like for real. A lot of small YouTubers have very decent content, but the thumbnail, you go to their page and it looks awful. It just screams amateur. And unfortunately, when something visually screams amateur, we tend to immediately believe that the content is going to be bad or even on watchable. But don't worry, today I'm going to give you a bunch of tips on how to improve your thumbnail game. I'm going to give you a bunch of secrets and I'm going to explain everything to you. We're going to be using a free software, but whatever software you're using, editing software for your templates, you're going to be able to apply everything that I tell you today. I'm going to do my best to keep it accessible, comprehensible, and easy to apply. And it's all going to happen right after this message from our sponsor. And today's sponsor is actually really good for YouTubers. If you check out own.gg slash get level, that's my special link. You're going to see there's a bunch of stream overlays. You you can create YouTube banners. If you're going to have membership on your YouTube channel, you can create badges. You can create custom emotes. They even have a custom avatar maker. Even if you're not live streaming and you're just creating content using a broadcasting software like OBS, you can apply YouTube overlays like game overlays to make your stuff look good. But if you do live stream, you're going to get everything you need, like alerts, for example, some awesome YouTube banners for your channel. Oh, and let's not forget the gaming logo maker. Oh, and I almost forgot to tell you that they have the official Call of Duty overlays. I know you've been been playing modern warfare recently look at that all of that is official on top of that there's a special promo going on for 50 percent off if you type the code streaming at checkout all you have to do is go to own.gg slash get level that is o-w-n-3-d.gg slash get level so for me when it comes to making thumbnails there are three main rules one is contrast two is hierarchy and the third one is simplicity of course you want to look up what other people in your same niche are doing because you want to communicate a certain vibe with the thumbnail but for example as well as i like my background lights and all that this would not be a good thumbnail why is that one contrast I should be the focus of the thumbnail. I am not the brightest thing right now in the room, so there's not a lot of emphasis on me. Two, same thing, hierarchy. Since I'm not the most bright nor colorful thing in the room, there's not enough focus on me. Three, simplicity. There's a whole lot going on. Too much detail, too cluttered. So let's improve the contrast. Boom, background's gonna be darker and I'm gonna be brighter. Hierarchy, we're gonna play a little bit with the colors. Simplicity, we're gonna blur the background to get rid of all that detail. And the most detailed thing on the image is gonna be me. Now we have one last problem. And that problem is that we don't know what this is about. Me being centered in the frame and making a serious face probably means that I'm about to say something important. So we can add some text to both sides or make it blend with the background for some stylized effect. Since the background is dark, the text is gonna be white or light blue. It's gonna be big enough to read, therefore achieving good contrast, hierarchy, and also simplicity. We're not gonna go with any wild fonts. We want it to be very visible and easy to read. Introducing Photopia.com. This is what we're gonna use in order to create a thumbnail from scratch, let's say. We're gonna break down one of the most popular formats of thumbnails that you see on YouTube. Usually it's human face because your brain cannot stop but want to detect other human faces. There's nothing more interesting to the human brain than the other human's face. The second is gonna be text. Even though text is gonna be lower than human faces when it comes to importance, there's a lot of huge success Successful YouTubers that don't use text at all, they just show you a subject and a reaction to said subject. In my case, I make tutorials, it can get very complicated to communicate what I'm saying without any text. So step one would be take a picture after you're done recording. The goal here is to invoke a reaction that has to do with the video. If you're reviewing a movie and you're sad about it, make a sad face. If you're reviewing a bad movie, make a disappointed face. If you want to tell your audience about a new update to your favorite game and you're hyped about it, Time to do your YouTuber face. Now, if you don't use your camera to show your face for your videos, don't worry. You can use any face. As long as there's a face in the thumbnail, you're gonna get more clicks than anything else. You cover a video game, find a character in that video game. The things that you cover don't have faces. You know what? Make up a face for yourself. Go on Google, type avatar generator or something like that, and then use that as your face to represent you. I shouldn't have to teach you how to take a picture of yourself in 2022, but I'm gonna use the camera app for Windows. It's gonna bring it up here. I can click on the left here to put a timer two seconds and I'm gonna make a reaction face 
You can obviously also use your phone to do this. Once I'm done, I'm gonna click bottom right here. It's gonna bring me to the folder. And those are the pictures. As you can see, you don't necessarily have to do the YouTuber face. You can also make this face and the YouTuber face. Now we're gonna go to photopia.com. This is basically Photoshop for free on the internet. We're gonna click on new project and we're gonna input 1920 by 1080. That is 1080p normal format. DPI, we're gonna put that at 300 and then click create. From there, you're gonna go find those pictures. Usually it's in the camera roll in uh, pictures. As you can see, I have a whole folder of them. If one day I forget to take a picture, I can still create a thumbnail with a reaction based on all the pictures that I took. You can just drag and drop. Look at that, beautiful. Now I'm gonna just scale it in a way that my face is really big enough basically to be kind of the emphasis of the whole thing right there i'm gonna press enter right so on the right side we see our background we see our picture layer now we want to separate our face from the background remember it's too cluttered and blah 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 so what i'm gonna do i'm actually gonna hold alt click and drag up to duplicate that image just in case i mess up i'm gonna go at the bottom here and i'm gonna click on add raster mask as you can see it adds this white layer here can hold alt to look at it so right now this is a transparency layer basically that's a it's a mask layer if i switch the colors to black and i grab the brush tool and i paint on it everything that's black is actually going to be fully transparent so if i hold alt and i click on it again you don't see the difference but i'm going to turn off the background and as you can see boom that's what a mask is that's it you create a mask and then you can paint on it or you can select specific parts and hide some parts i'm gonna right click and i'm gonna delete that mask and i'm gonna create it again by clicking on add raster mask boom all right so there's multiple ways to go about separating someone or something from the background we're gonna use the lasso tool just because i want to be fast so i'm gonna the lasso tool is basically you're gonna click and drag until it looks all right i'm using a mouse no tablet here you do not have to be very precise here nice i'm gonna go all the way here there are some better ways to cut you from the background, but I don't have time to show you that today. We're just gonna create this selection, nice. And while we have the mask selected, right, you make sure that the white thing is selected. I'm gonna press Control I to invert it, and I'm gonna press Control D to deselect it. I'm gonna press Control I again, so that way, holding Alt to look at the mask, I am visible, background, invisible, right? If I turn this off, boom, I'm separated. And you might be thinking, oh my God, this does not look good. Chill, chill. All right. <laughs> Select the bottom layer, go to filter, and then go for blur. You can add a Gaussian blur. Nice, make it as blurry as you want. It does not matter that much. Click OK. With that same layer, that background layer selected, you wanna go at the bottom here and click on new adjustment layer. You're gonna go ahead and click on curves and you're gonna drag that down. Remember the hierarchy thing? Your face is basically gonna be the brightest thing in the room. Of course, it doesn't match uh, anything anymore, but that's fine, because we can blend it in. We're gonna go back, click on the mask, and then we're gonna blend this in using the brush tool. So press B if you want, right click, Hardness is gonna be zero. That's gonna make you a smooth feathered brush. We want the brush to be relatively big, nice. And we want the opacity to be low, also nice. And while it's selected, you wanna make sure your color is set to black. So we're gonna delete basically parts of that top layer, which is my face, until it blends in a little bit better. You can play around with the opacity if you want it to be more visible per click like that. That's nice. I actually want this to be maybe a little less. And I'm just gonna click a lot until it blends kind of. You just want to get rid of uh, some edges. Of course, you want to take your time. I'm doing this just for tutorials, so I'm going fast as I can. If you're wondering if this is what I do for my thumbnails, no, because Adobe Photoshop can separate me from the background in like one click. All right, that's not bad. Now we want to do some color adjustment to the face to really make it pop. What I like to do is use a level adjustment. Remember, new adjustment layer was at the bottom here and we're gonna go find levels. Has nothing to do with my name. That's not why I like it. It just turns out that it works really well. I'm gonna bring this up until my face is almost burnt. Burnt is when you have pure white. For example, my nose here and my eyes are pure white. You don't want that. You want it to be just under it. The eyes can be pure white though. So something like that. And we're gonna go and drag this handle. And this is gonna do the contrast for the darker parts. So we're gonna have a very pop, poppy, a very popping, a popping picture, very contrasty picture. Don't overdo it as uh, as soon as you see things being full black, basically like that. 
Yeah, that's too much. Although you could do that. <laughs> By the way, you can click on properties to make this disappear. Okay, not bad. So now what we can do is actually add some text. Now you can go ahead and add some very simple text. You click on the T, you click once, and then you type whatever you want. You can select it. Up here, you can change the color. I like putting, like I like having white as the main color. You can click on the word size and drag up to make it big. And then from there, top left, you're gonna find the actual font. You want something that is big, that is chunky, so that's very visible, depending of course on what type of video you're making. If you're making like a makeup tutorial, there's no, there's no need to do all that. Although, it would probably work. <laughs> Oh, it's the Star Wars font. For example, I like this font. It looks pretty good. I can click on the move tool here. This could be it, right? I would add like a stroke. I would add like a shadow to make it pop, but we are lazy here and we're trying to go fast. So I'm going to delete this by dragging it to the trash bin. And I'm going to go to a specific website called techstudio.co. And from there, there's going to be a bunch of templates. They're not going to be super high quality, but who cares? Those are thumbnails. And you're going to pick something that you believe is going to pop against this background. Usually I want to go for some light colors, like white is going to be the main color and then whatever is going on in the back and this allows you to have actual 3d text which is pretty cool maybe i like maybe this would work turn off the ads and let's type but one thing that's actually important is that you want to use the least amount of letters possible let's do this i can go to style and i can just modify it as much as i want but i don't want to right now i'm just gonna go on shadows and i'm gonna turn that off Yes, it is French for me because I am French. Oh my God, you're French? Yes. Click on uh, download. Wait, background. You wanna click on background. You wanna turn off background. There you go. You're gonna go to download. You're gonna click on medium because that's free. And you're gonna click on PNG. You're gonna download it. You're gonna click save. And from there, we're gonna go back to our project. We're gonna click and drag. Boom, it's right there. As you can see, it's kind of small. So we're gonna lose quality when we uh, make this bigger. I'm going to place it like that. Nice. And I'm actually going to use the text tool to type the word thumbnail. I'm going to click on the T, type thumbnails. Nice. Select all of it. Go up there. Reduce the size. Not bad. I'm going to click underneath it. So whatever is underneath. And I'm going to go on my rectangle tool. You can't. Well, actually, you can rectangle tool. And I'm going to drag a rectangle around it. That's not bad, but I'm going to control Z and I'm going to add a corner radius up top here. And let's add 30. So it's going to be a rounded rectangle. Nice. As you can see, boom. Now, if I want to move the word thumbnails, I kind of want to move them together because this is going to be bound to it. And here you can pick whatever. You can double click on the icon of the shape to just pick the color you want. But, you know, for the sake of contrast, black and white, nothing is more contrasty than that. Although we could probably get away with like a dark blue or something. Yeah, let's do that. So we have our uh, image called clickbait here. It is bad quality. We're going to go to filters. We're going to go to sharpen. We're going to unsharp mask. We're going to make sure our radius is kind of low, like 1%. And then we're going to bring that up until it kind of looks sharp ish. Control Alt T to transform. Oh, it's still selected. I'm actually going to make this a little smaller. Nice. I'm going to select shape and thumbnail and I'm going to control alt T as well and I'm going to rotate it a little bit and then place it somewhere here. Nice. I'm actually going to place the clickbait text on top of it. I'm going to drag this up. Boom. There it is. And that's pretty nice. What I can do is I can actually add a shadow to the clickbait text here. Go to effects, go to drop shadow and then play around with it. I like it to be on linear burn, lower the opacity pretty low. Nice, so now we have the effect on the bottom shape. Okay, I'm doing too much. I'm gonna hold Alt on my keyboard. I'm gonna hover over the word effects here, and I'm gonna drag that on top of my thumbnail, right? So now I have the shadow on the word thumbnails. I'm gonna go back and clean the mask up a little bit just for the sake of criticism in the comments. All right, so we actually have some issues here. Our issue is that the levels that I added to my face is actually being applied to everything because it's on top of everything. And I'm not gonna lie, I don't mind. It actually looks better that way. But if you wanted to keep it only to your face, you would place it on top of your face here. You would hold Alt and click on it once. Boom, and now it's only being applied to my face. But in this case, I actually like the way it looked, so we're gonna keep it there. The same way, we're gonna add some uh, color corrections to the clickbait here. Right now, the color scheme is obviously purple, dark blue, light blue. So having orange and yellow makes no sense. Yellow is not too bad because it's a good complement color for uh, blue. It 
a good contrasting color, but orange looks horrible right now. So we're gonna add an adjustment layer again, and this time we're gonna go to hue and saturation while we have the clickbait text selected, by the way. And that way we can play around with it. Usually I like to play around with it to see if um, the two colors are gonna match eventually. So you can see here we get that's where we get the purple but uh, then we go into green as the main color and we don't want that we are introducing some green but cyan and purple seem to be the main colors here so we're gonna try to stop somewhere near i'm gonna bump up the saturation a lot i'm gonna bring that down a little bit just so we can get that purple back hopefully and now i'm gonna hold alt click on it once so it's gonna apply to whatever is underneath it in this case it's gonna be our text boom see what it looks like not bad not a fan of the green but that is not bad we can add another adjustment layer hue saturation in this case where it says range i'm going to try to go on green and see if that affects it it does and now you can see i can bring it so that i get uh cyan or even like a proper blue and that's how you go from this picture to a proper thumbnail one thing i like to do control minus is to look at it from here. Because most likely people are gonna be on their phone, it's gonna appear on the front page, it's gonna be small. Is it visible, is it readable when it's that small? Does it tell exactly what it is? And does it invoke the reaction that I have? Oh, I'm so surprised because clickbait thumbnails, right? That's the whole clickbait part here. Now there are some extra techniques and I will probably make another video because you guys seem to not like when my videos are too long. So this is the basics of making proper thumbnails. Again, if you don't show your face and if it doesn't have to do with you, whatever the subject is going to be, you can put big text plus subject, hopefully a face, or you can put face plus a subject without the text and that's it. Just remember the contrast. The brightest thing on screen needs to be the text and the face. Now what I want you to do is go to the comment section and tell me in your opinion which YouTuber has the best thumbnails. I'll go take a look and maybe I'll make a tutorial on how to make thumbnails like them. In the meantime, if you missed the video on how I set up this background light, you can check it out right now. But I gotta tell you, thank you so much for watching. Go out there, make me proud. Get level, out.